Hello and welcome to today's lesson on resistivity, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at defining and calculating the quantity of resistivity. So if we've been successful and learned in this lesson, we should be able to define what the electrical term resistivity means, understand how to calculate resistivity from given values, and then describe how resistivity can be used to determine the values of a material, which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.5.1.3, resistivity. Now we can start understanding concepts in electricity by considering a metal wire. So we'll, we'll consider this with the inside of a metal wire, such as nichrome. Now, nichrome is an alloy of nickel, chromium, and iron. Now, nichrome, like all metal wires, are full of mobile charge carriers. Now, in this example, as the metal as the wire is a metal conductor, the mobile charge carriers are free electrons. So here, the mobile charge carriers are electrons which are not bound to any nuclei or ions. They are delocalized electrons. Now, the greater the amount of mobile charge carriers in your conductor, the better the electrical conductor. Now we can place an electromotive force through the wire which can make the mobile charge carriers want to move in a certain direction. So the mobile charge carriers will want to move to the opposite charge that they possess, so in this case for a metal conductor, positive, and move away from the same charge, the negative. So an EMF is provided by a battery or power pack or the mains electricity across our conductor. So an EMF will cause the mobile charge carriers to move in the same direction in the wire. So an electromotive force will cause the current to flow when there's a complete circuit. So an EMF is the given ability for the mobile charge carriers to do work per charge. It's the amount of work done into the circuit per unit charge. Now it's important to note that as the mobile charge carriers move through the conductor, they will collide with metal ions which make up the conductor and the mobile charge carriers will slow down. So this idea is resistance. So it's the idea of ion charge carrier collisions, which slows down our, our air charge carriers, which then leads to this idea of electrical resistance, as shown in the following animation. Now, the more the blocking of the mobile charge carriers, the more the resistance in your material. Now, there are many ways to alter the amount of collisions between the mobile charge carriers and the metal ions and therefore change the resistance. But it's important to note that if there were no collisions between the charge carriers and ions, then there's no resistance. Now, materials like this are called superconductors. Now, there are no superconductors at room temperature currently. Now, the following factors affect the amount of resistance in an electrical circuit, the type of material, because different materials have different density of metal ions, so have a different number of collisions. The second factor is the length of the material. The longer the wire, the more metal ions present, the more collisions the mobile charge carriers have with the ions. The third factor is the cross-sectional area of the material. The greater the area of the material, the more spread out the charge carriers are, so the fewer the collisions there are with the metal ions. Now it's important to know that some people have the misconception that this change the resistance because there's more space between the metal ions. That is not correct. There are no gaps if you make a material have a larger cross-sectional area. Now the final factor is the temperature of the material. If the ions vibrate with a greater amplitude, then the mobile charge carriers are more likely to collide with them. So here are our following factors which affect the amount of resistance in an electrical circuit. So our resistance on a conductor depends upon the type of material, the length the material, the cross-sectional area of the material, and the temperature of the material. Now these are called the physical conditions of the conductor. The physical condi conditions are the quantities which can change the resistance in an object. Now the physical conditions an ob a conductor has are due to the conductor and nothing else. Now the different factors which can affect the conductivity of a material are the following. The type of material, which is linked to the resistance, the length of the material, and the cross-sectional area of the material. Now each factor contributes to the impedance of charge carriers flowing 
in the material as they move through it. So these factors combine into one overall factor which we call the resistivity of the material. Now resistivity does not alter for a material when it changes dimensions. Resistivity is a constant value for a material if it undergoes the same physical uh, conditions throughout the process. Now it's important to note that temperature is not included in resistivity as there's a complex relationship between temperature and charge impedance in a material. So our full definition of resistivity is that the resistivity of a material is defined as the resistance generated in a wire of one meter length with a one meter squared cross-sectional area and it is measured in ohm meters. Now resistivity is a much more useful quantity to measure than resistance because resistivity is the same for a material regardless of its dimensions. So it's a quantitative measure of how much the mobile charge carriers are prevented from moving in a current. So whilst the resistance of a material can be affected by the length and the cross-sectional area of the object, which means it therefore varies on the context of the material, or the object I should say, the resistivity does not. Now resistivity can be used as a quantity to identify unknown materials as it's the same for all materials in every situation. So it doesn't matter if aluminium is shaped as a sheet or a cube or a sphere, it will have the same resistivity value. Now, resistivity does not incorporate the temperature of the material. So temperature can affect the resistance and the resistivity. So you should really always quote your resistivity at a certain temperature. Now, the most common resistivity given is at 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature. Now, resistivity acts as a quantitative measure of the impedance, and we can calculate it with the the following equation. Resistivity with the symbol rho is given the equation resistance times by cross-sectional area over length or rho equals Ra over L and its units are measured in ohm meters. Now it's important to know that resistivity is a measure of how difficult it is for current to flow in material. Now resistivity for a particular material varies with temperature so it's usually quoted for a particular temperature. This is because resistivity depends on resistance and resistance depends with temperature. Now resistivity for a particular material also varies with light intensity, that's because resistivity depends on resistance and resistance varies with light intensity. Now a superconductor is a material with zero resistivity. Now this occurs below a certain temperature and that is called the critical temperature. Now this equation of rho equals Ra over L is found in your examination equation book, but it's a very common examination question to ask you to rearrange this equation to find a value. Now let's assume that most materials are in electrical wire shaped so they have to have a circular cross-sectional area so in most cases we can say the area used in this equation is pi r squared or pi d squared over 4. Now, like mentioned before, resistivity is important as it's a quantitative measure of how much resistance a material generates. The higher the resistivity, the less suitable the material is to carry a current. So the values of resistivity are useful in the real world as it allows physicists and engineers to work out the resistance the material will generate in an application they'll be used for. So the higher the value of resistivity, the better the insulator the material is. So Insulators have an approximate resistivity between 10 to the 8 and 10 to the 20 ohm meters. Semiconductors have a resistivity of approximately 10 to the 0 to 10 to the 8 ohm meters. And, and metals or conductors have a resistivity approximately equal to 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. So here are some common values of resistivity at 20 degrees Celsius. So as noted before, resistivity varies greatly with temperature. So you always should be stating the temperature of your substance. The higher the resistivity, the less suitable it is to transfer charge. So as we said previously, conductors have a resistivity of approximately 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters, semiconductors 10 to the minus 1 ohm meters, and insulators have a resistivity of approximately 10 to the 12 ohm meters. Now in a conductor, when the temperature is increased, the ions of that conductor are vibrating with a greater amplitude and collide with, more, with mobile charge carriers, increasing the resistivity as these, as these collisions happen with a greater frequency. So the temperature of a material alters the resistivity of the material. And this follows the same physics as how resistance changes with temperature. So you can see in the following slide a link between resistivity and temperature in a conductor. 
Now in a semiconductor, when the temperature is increased, the structure releases more mobile charge carriers and decreases resistivity. So the temperature of a material alters the resistivity of a material. So again, this follows the same physics as how resistance changes with temperature. Now this graph shows the link between the resistivity and temperature in a semiconductor. So let's now look at a few examples of calculating the resistivity of a material. So what's the resistivity of iron in a wire of 20 centimeters in length with a radius of 1.0 millimeters with a, where the resistance is measured to be 25 ohms. So the first step is you write out the values given in the question. Step two, you work out the cross-sectional area of the object. Then you place the values into the rearranged equation. Then you work out your answer to the correct significant figures with the units and you can always check to see if the answers make logical sense. So you get in this case an answer of 3.9 times 10 to the minus 4 ohm meters which approximately is true for a conductor how about working out the resistance that there will be in a um, cube of five centimeters length with a constant in metal so the first thing you would do is write out the values given in the question you then work out the cross-sectional area of your object you would then place into the equation r equals rho l over a work through and see if the answer looks suitable and then in this case a wire has a diameter of 1.00 millimeters and a resistivity of 5.0 times 10 to the minus 6 ohm meters. Calculate the length of the wire that the resistance would have when it is 5.0 ohms. So what you would do is once again you'd write out the values given in the question, you place the values into the rearranged equation, always checking to see if we're making logical sense in our answers. We then work out the cross-sectional area of the object and then work out the answer to the correct number of significant figures with you. Units. So let's summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson. Resistivity is equal to rho uh, equal in Ra over L. Now the description should include a qualitative effect of temperature on the resistance of metal conductors and of semiconductors like the misters and have an understanding of applications with graphs. Now you should understand that superconductivity is a property of certain materials which have zero resistivity at and below a critical temperature which depends on the material. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define what the term electrical resistivity means, understand how to calculate resistivity from given values, and describe how resistivity can be used to determine values of a material. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on resistivity. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.